only company right now and potentially ever in the United States that's aiming to completely transform U.S. residential real estate is Opendoor, and they own it outright. Opendoor is using machine learning to train an algorithm to value homes faster than a realtor can start their car. If successful, they will disrupt the housing market. Today, I will be talking to Tyler Oakland, a Stanford physician and surgeon by day and finance writer by night. Tyler has appeared on many podcasts and interviews discussing Open Door's rapidly growing business. I'll be asking Tyler why he thinks Open Door will thrive in a housing market crash, how he became 10 times more accurate than Wall Street, and what the future of Open Door could look like in a decade. We are not financial advisors, and we both own Open Door Common Stock. Enjoy. It's May 30th, 2022, and the U.S. housing market has never been higher. However, many believe today we are on the precipice of a housing market crash. You made the argument more than once that Open Door will not only survive a crash, but potentially also thrive. This sounds counterintuitive. Could you clear up the critical success factors that make Open Door agnostic to a market downturn? Great question. So basically, the central concept is that Open Door's flagship product is a tool to help uh, home sellers sell their home, right? And so when you think about the dynamics of 2021 and early 2022, like you said, the market's never been hot, hotter. So if you're a home seller and you're trying to sell a home, you list it on the market and within a week, you know, you've got 10 offers over asking value. So it's really easy to sell your home the traditional way. Um, and that's sort of divorced from the classic or more traditional way of selling your home, which is really challenging. It takes you know, around 90 days, there's a lot of counterparties, there's a lot of showing and staging and time that you have to invest into selling your home. And, and even even after all that time, um, there's a double digit percentage chance that those offers are going to fall through. When you think about that traditional experience, away from 2021 and, and 2022, that's really what Open Door was meant for, is to make selling your home easier. And so as the housing market gets uh, a little less hot and we start moving to at least a flat cycle or a down cycle, sellers are going to increasingly crave the liquidity, speed, and certainty of Open Door's product because they want help or they're going to want help selling their home. I know like in the early days when Jeff Bezos was talking about what customers are going to want in the future, he always knew that there's going to be a few things that they always want. They want speed, they want selection and they want a fair price, they're always gonna want that 10 years into the future. So he doubled down and maximized all of the things he could do to make those selections better than anybody else. I feel like Open Door has some similarities. Could you like expand on that? It's sort of a, an easy thing that I think we all recognize, but if you, if you make a transaction faster, easier, and cheaper, you're gonna win a market, right? And, and so, and that's, that's really, what Open Door is is going for with with this whole process is to take something that's Byzantine and anachronistic and turn it into a delightful experience. When we go out as as humans, when we go out and buy a home or sell a home, it should be a delightful process, right? Like mm -hmm. it's our largest asset, and all of the possibilities and potential of moving into a new home with your family and starting a life there, right? Like that's literally the American dream is your own house and a white picket fence. And yet the experience is so broken. Even you know, in a normal market, it's impossible or at least very difficult to sell and there's a lot of stress involved. In a hot market, you can't buy a home. There's way too many competing offers and there's not enough inventory right now. It's like, it, it doesn't matter what way the pendulum swings. It's just a really challenging piece of commerce. And so if a company could come in and remove all of that opacity and complexity and create one hub where you can do both buying and selling of a home and it's easy that's not only good for the american consumer but that's an investment that i think we should all be considering so i, I remember in one of your interviews you, you talked about how like in childhood you had you you moved a lot uh for me like i grew up in the same home my entire life so I, i'm not aware of the the low nps points that moving has um, could you explain like how your experience has made you form your opinion on open door? You, you really do get to see sort of the full, the full stack of issues with the transaction, no matter what age you are, right? Like when you're a child at random hours, you have to leave your home, but clean it up really quick beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um, 
can do that over and over and over again. And strangers are traipsing through your house. You know, you see that your parents are stressed because they don't know exactly what the price is. And they have a realtor that they like, but they also understand that there's misaligned incentives. That's one of the most stressful parts, I think, as a, as a kid. But then there's also the things of like moving and packing up. And, and again, just having strangers moving things around, losing things in the process, um, or, you know, your items being broken. It's just the reason, like we, we know that real estate is broken, right? Residential real estate is broken for so many different reasons. Um, and so the obvious question is why hasn't someone done this before? Why hasn't, why wasn't open door launched in, you know, 2000 or screw it like 1990, like what, why is it taken so much time for a company to come in and try to change all this? And the reason is because it's so hard. You need to, you need to not only be committed to fixing all these little hard things, but you also need to be of a decent scale of a massive scale, actually, uh, to have enough capital that you can solve these problems because they're only problems that can be solved with, with a massive amount of capital and scale. I remember you saying in, in an interview uh, that buying a home is fun, Zillow, but selling a home is hard, open door. Can you explain why Zillow and Redfin and Offerpad or why open door is a little different from them? Open door is predicated on this single digit margin. Like it has been operating on the single digit margin since it was founded. And so the company built, structurally built the company around that single digit margin, knowing that it had to be frugal and be focused on cutting costs and making sure that its entire offering had prudent unit economics. And so then when you take search SEO companies like Zillow and Redfin, who have, um, you know, SaaS like gross profit margins coming in and trying to compete, I think it's easy to say that. And, and, you know, it's easy to say, oh, we have better data. We're going to have lower CAC. Um, you know, we have top of funnel. And so we're going to eat open doors lunch. But the, but the truth of the matter is, is like one CAC is not that important because the LTV is so much higher. Um, but two, the data actually aren't as useful because <clears throat> although they're using some demand signals and some proprietary economic information, it's not as accurate in the variance, which is most critical in, in sort of a portfolio approach to buying and selling homes. But most importantly, the culture's off, right? Like you have a culture of tech, growthy, high gross profit margin businesses suddenly trying to compete in this really frugal, lean um, space. And, and I think that as a result, those companies were overconfident. And they were so focused on their, their tech advantages and expertise that they forgot about the importance of the operations, the boots on the ground, the people, you know, actually managing these properties. Um, it's a very different core competency. And I think that was why I questioned from the beginning that, that you know, these companies could come in and, and, and even stand a chance at competing with a company like Open Door, which was built for this space. You talk a lot about culture when it comes to Open Door. And I was recently reading a biography about uh, Jeff Bezos. And I, I could have sworn halfway through the book that you also read the same book because you were talking about how Eric Wu uh, focused on the money ball problem of hiring employees, focusing on unvalued talents, and then also just a culture of frugality and people that are focused on the mission. Why, why is that different than Zillow or all these other companies, especially right now when we're about to have a housing market downturn possibly and also a recession? Because Open Door knew that it was always going to have to fight for every basis point for its business, they also knew that they weren't going to be able to compete with Google and Meta and you know these established big tech companies that are printing money. So you know there's an option there. You can either compete head to head and just get worse talent, right? You know, pay more money and bankrupt the business, or you can find missionaries, right? Like people, people who are partnered for the mission of this incredibly challenging problem of transforming residential real estate. To do that, you have to be able to tell a good story. You have to be visionary and patient, and you have to be willing, you know, to walk away from people who are more of the mercenary rather than missionary flavor. But if you can accumulate people who are really committed to that problem, then they're not motivated by by a salary, right? They're motivated by the company succeeding. So that's equity grants, you know, shares, shares of stock. 
And that's a really powerful business if you can convince an employee base of the importance of the problem you're solving and incentivize them um, based on the success of the business. And it also allows them to operate with these prudent unit economics. You've explained in a recent article on Datadoor.io that uh, Open Door doesn't have one profitability, profitability lever. They have two, and that's spread. Uh, do you mind going in a little bit uh, about spread and how it's different uh, from how they make money on the way up? The way that Open Door works is uh, it has its 5% fee, but its gross profit margins are higher than 5%. So the question is, where does that extra profit margin come from? The intuition of people at least throughout 2021, is that the remainder of that gross profit margin is gonna be home price appreciation or HPA in ancillary services. But the problem is, is that ancillary services is super small right now, like very little contribution um, to overall gross profit margin. And so you realize, okay, the rest of it is just HPA. But the concern based on sort of that framing, right? Of just all we have is fee and home price appreciation is like one, Open Door was unprofitable all throughout 2021 when home price appreciation was bonkers. So that's a concern. But two, once home price appreciation stops, what's going to happen to the gross profit margin? What I did was looked into what component of Open Door's gross profit margin can actually be explained by HPA. And what I found is that it's actually, it's, it's not even the second biggest contributor to gross profit margin in Q1. It was the third. And the remainder is actually something called spread, which is the difference between what the home is worth and what Open Door bought it for. In the same way that home price appreciation is realized on the sale, right? Like you buy the home, it appreciates over a few months, you sell it at a higher value because it's appreciated. That's HPA. Spread is realized on the buy side. And this is really critical because it means that Open Door is able to buy homes for less than they're worth. That's that's what the, the metric is. But spread is going to get bigger if Open Door feels like HPA is slowing down um, or if there's a greater risk in that home, right? And so Open Door, Open Door is basically using its forward uh, modeling dynamics for what it thinks they're gonna be able to do with the house to widen the spread to, to hit their guideposts of contribution profit margin. It's kind of this interesting um, idea that, you know, in times where the market is hot, HPA should dominate uh, uh, contribution to gross profit margin and contribution profit margin. But in a downturn or a flat cycle, spread is going to constitute the majority of, um, of the gross profit and contribution profit margin. The article you bring up uh, for the entire quarter of Q1 open doors, 10.4% gross profit margin benefited from only about less than 2% of HPA uplift, which is really counterintuitive to what most people would think uh, Open Door is doing and how they're profiting off of these homes. I was shocked as well. Like I went into this sort of with no core hypotheses other than that spread would be a component, but this shocked me. And I, I, I went through the numbers in a few different ways and, and I acknowledged in the article that, you know, I'm using US FRED data um, to find median home prices and, and um, HPA dynamics. And that, that might not be a perfect metric because it's, it's an aggregate of all markets. And Open Door is in 48 markets, but 30% of, of its sales are in two markets, Atlanta and Phoenix. That said, the point of the article wasn't so much to say like, absolutely spread was 165 basis points in Q1. It was more to say spread is here and I'm, uh, very confident that spread was bigger than HPA in Q1. Let's get rid of all the bear arguments and assume Open Door's algorithm becomes an enormous moat. What do you say to those who would claim that Open Door is manipulating the housing market by purchasing homes to artificially inflate the price? Before you answer that, I actually have a TikTok video of somebody uh, claiming just that. So I guess we could both watch that now here. We just sold a house to Open Door. And the retail value of the property was $350,000. They paid $399,000 sight unseen. They waived uh, appraisal. They waived their inspection, bought it as is $399. They never even saw the house. They're paying over retail on houses right now. And they're happy to do so. Okay, Why are they doing that? A couple of things. 
they're moving the market because here's what happened we we researched that neighborhood and found they own 21 homes in that neighborhood so them paying forty nine thousand dollars over retail what they did is they amplified the value of all those other homes so yes they might have paid forty nine thousand dollars over retail on that one house but they probably made a million and a half dollars in appreciation by forcing the appraisals to you know for for history to to happen in that market i think uh i think from like a a real local real estate perspective that argument makes sense but i think that there are some finer points that that are probably worth discussing. A lot of people sort of have come out with this argument that Open Door and the I buyers manipulated the market, and they're the reason why home prices have soared. And that's just craziness. That, I mean, it's ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense. Like, like we have a basic issue of supply and demand. There's a supply and demand mis imbalance, and and that's really what's been driving a lot of the um, crazy home price appreciation that we've been seeing lately. Not to mention that if you look at the top five uh, markets in terms of appreciation in 2021, four out of five were in markets where there are no I buyers. In terms of absolute home price appreciation year over year, four out of five were in markets that I buyers don't operate, which is crazy. And then you also look at the, the numbers of, um, you know, what actual percent of the market does Open Door own? And in only two markets, is it is it really like one in 20 homes? Um, are bought and sold by Open Door, and that's Atlanta and Phoenix, and and so like you know in in the other markets that they operate, it's more like one percent to two percent, maybe even less than that, especially in their newer markets. And so the idea that somehow a company that's buying that few homes and selling that few homes is manipulating the market is is craziness. And finally, you know the other thing that's important to mention, this guy Pace Morby is not really considering the fact that. Um, you know, in 2021, home home prices appreciated like crazy, right? Like That's outside, true. well beyond what Open Door is doing. And so, if Open Door is paying forty nine thousand dollars more for a home, it's probably because they think it's going to keep appreciating, right? They're sacrificing uh, their spread because they're they're convinced that HPA is going to be high enough that they're going to still hit their guideposts. You know, I don't know how this guy found that his home was worth $350,000, but I can tell you that Open Door's algorithm is the most accurate me metric for what a home is valued at today, what its intrinsic value is today, and what it will be in a few months, right? Like that is their core competency. There's a lot, there's a lot wrong and incomplete about his analysis and, and his video, but it, it makes for a really nice soundbite. There's been a lot of people on Twitter that you've talked to that give anecdotal evidence, uh, but they don't see the larger picture. Uh, so that's why I want to bring up Datador. And uh, uh, could you explain exactly like how you got in, in touch with the guys over at Datador, or how, how the whole this whole uh, this whole thing started? I don't think I've told this story before. In January of of this year, I got a DM from someone I'd never met before on Twitter. He was like, "Hey, I am a Shopify developer. I know that you're you're trying to collect data." to better understand in real time Open Door's home transaction process. He was like, I think I can build that engine, but I'm probably not the right person to like interpret it and use it to speak to the market. And he's like, do you wanna work on this with me? And I was like, yes, that's awesome. That's so cool. I had actually been um, in the process of trying to find someone to build that with me because I'm not, I'm not super tech savvy. And uh, this guy, Sebastian, who's my partner was perfect. And he built this incredibly powerful engine and over the past few months has added these edge cases that make the data continuously more accurate. And we've been able to use them to make predictions about quarterly results that are far more accurate than the sell side analysts. Um, you know, the Wall Street analysts are working at Bank of America, for example. Just so everybody knows that Datadoor's prediction was 3.7% off of the actual Q1 results, while Wall Street was around 34.1% off of Q1 results, making Datadore 10 times more accurate than Wall Street. W was this just to be able to see the data behind Open Door, or was there a bigger reason to starting this? I, I walked into the finance world basically, you know, 360 days ago today. Um, and so I had to be very strategic about building an audience and creating content because I was, I was trying to run from standing still. I didn't have a Twitter account. I didn't have a Substack. I'd never written a financial article before. And so 
I had to be really strategic from the beginning to get to the point that I wanted to be. And so when I started thinking about my content, I really enjoyed writing about companies. But one of the things that as a as a content creator, I think really powers the flywheel is proprietary data, proprietary content, uh, things that no one else has. It was really like Datador was really this thing that powered everything, right? It gave me unique pr proprietary content. It allowed me to better understand this company, um, potentially more than than everyone else. Um, and then also improved, uh, improved my ability to invest in the company because, you know, I, I have access to real time data. So I don't have to wait three months uh, to get an update on, on the company, I can just look at my own dashboard and see results in real time. Um, and so it's been it's been really great. From that perspective, surprisingly, it's also become uh, a business. Uh, and so it's something that I spend a decent amount of my mind share on now with Sebastian. We're incorporated as an LLC now and we have uh, institutional clients. We're going to be launching a, a retail tier here soon. Um, but it's been a ton of fun. Yeah. Open Door has created a free software for anybody to use, and that's called Open Door Max. You were a part of the beta program. What is Open Door Max and why should we care? Yeah, Open Door Max is a really interesting product that Open Door is actively building right now. But the concept is that it should look and feel a lot like any trading apps that you have for, for equities. Um, but what it's measuring is actually home price using Open Door's proprietary automated valuation model. I think it's really interesting if you're a homeowner because you can see in real time the price of your home, the value of your home, but also what contributes to changes in the price of the home, right? So it'll, it'll say like, your home is now worth $5,000 less because a home in your neighborhood sold for $20,000 yeah. less than expected, right? It'll give you notifications based on the data that Open Doors AVM uses to fuel their offers. I think the long-term strategy for this, is, as Max has rolled out across more markets, is as lead generation, right? Like, if you check your home value multiple times a day, that value is backed by an Open Door offer. That's really powerful, right? Like, you you have the security of always feeling like you have money in your pocket. And although you might not be willing to sell today, in the future, when you're like, you know, I'm considering selling my home and moving. Why would you not start with Open Door Max to get an offer there um, if it's if it's a product that you've already used and you feel comfortable with? And so mm -hmm. it's really a nice way for Open Door to gain top of funnel exposure to to clients that maybe aren't interested in moving right now, but it's it's a continuous touch point along the path to to that customer ultimately deciding to move. It, it almost seems pretty similar to Robinhood on the first page. Do you think in the future that Open Door becomes the Open Door Home Exchange, where people trade by a few taps from their app like this? You mean like entire homes <laughs> or parts of home? I'm thinking of the New York Stock Exchange, and, and I'm thinking, well, Open Door is the only one that even sounds close to something like that. I think that there's actually a few startups in the like blockchain web three space that are currently working on this, like parcel, for example, finding ways to invest in small components of a, of a home, sort of like the stock market. Um, and blockchain is sort of uniquely suited because of the speed and, and you know, the accuracy. So I, I think in, in the web three space, we're going to see a lot more uh, evolution of how we, how we transact real estate. I think that there's a chance that open door and max could become this long term. In particular, I think it would be nice to uh, to be able to invest in in markets where Open Door owns homes as like a part of their how they fund homes, right? Like like if if Open Door created an offering and they're like, okay, for this we're we're going to be buying a thousand homes in Philadelphia every year, you can invest a percentage of in, in a percentage of that, and so now you have exposure to Philadelphia. Say, I also want exposure to Orlando. I think that's in the wings. That's in the pipeline for sure because it creatively adds ways for Open Door to, to gain more capital, which it's going to need as it scales into its businesses. Just the, the idea of creating those financial products that don't exist now. And I feel like every year, there's so many different new ways to invest your money that uh, the market's offering. But uh, the housing market has been really not liquid. I do wanna talk about, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say like the possibilities for Max go well beyond what I outlined as well. Like 
Like for example, if we think about this as a, as a core lead gen product, Open Door will be like, okay, what zip codes are you interested in? Like how many how many beds? How many how many uh, how many beds? How many baths? Like do you want a pool? Do you like you can fill out data about your dream home, right? And maybe you're not trying to buy a home right now, but you can get notifications when uh, you know, a new home enters the market and it fits your criteria and it's within your price point or a notification where in that zip code, oh, prices are going down. So maybe now it's a good time to buy and Open Door will help you buy that home. It's really incredible all the different ways that this product can be used because, because it's backed by an offer, it's so much more of a sticky financial instrument than just like a lead gen product. And Open Door owns the transaction because it can be like, okay, you want to buy this house? Perfect. We'll give you, uh, we'll give you your mortgage, your title in escrow. We'll, we'll do the fee. You get this price that you see on screen, and it's done. And that's there's nothing like that. You know what I mean? And and so as they roll this out across more markets, I think we're going to see this become a much larger contributor to to overall customer acquisition. I want to take uh, the Open Door Max experience and then also marry it real quick with your vision of what you call Open Door Home, because recently. Open Door acquired a few companies, Skylight, Pro.com, Red Door, all remodeling tech companies. What is your vision of Open Door Home and what could that look like in the future? Um, Open Door Home is the opportunity to turn this, you know, one off infrequent home transaction business to one that is a daily relationship with the customer over years and years and years. And, and, and this, is, this is really important because the dynamics of, of buying and selling a home and getting a customer, even if you, if you delight them, if they're only buying a home once a decade, it's not that great of a business, right? A better version of that business would be that customer buys and sells a home once every 10 years, but in between, you have all these embedded finance opportunities to extract higher LTV from the customer. When you think about owning the entire residential real estate stack, there's two components. There's a real estate transaction, and then there's also owning and managing that real estate. And so Open Door is currently focused on the real estate transaction, which is buying and selling a home. They own that. Over time, they'll add more things to that, like homeowner's insurance and warranty, but that's down the road. And those are going to make the actual transaction much more profitable. But the other items like owning and managing the home, so you can have things like moving, interior design, renovations, uh, replacing your roof, for example, um, handyman as a service, uh, um, refinancing your home, like all of these, all of these little opportunities that Open Door can introduce to its customers. And not only does it improve LTV, but actually improves their data and allows them to service homes better. It makes them a much stronger business and it keeps them top of mind for the next time that that customer chooses to buy a home. And I'm thinking when I first heard you talk about this, I realized like all this technology exists. Most i most new iPhones now have the ability to map 3D models of an interior of a home. If you're buying and selling a home with Open Door, Open Door has built their algorithm. They know exactly what the house is, what the seat of the home is. So uh, if they do own these uh, remodeling tech companies, they can say, "Hey, your granite uh, countertop in your kitchen. If we replace that and remodel it, could up your home's value by this much." Would you want to like uh, get a, any quote on that offer and see what it would look like? You can pull up your phone and see exactly what it would look like live. And it's just to be clear, this is free marketing, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the other part of it is if you're an open door home customer and you have the open door home app, and you, you look in it every day and you can see the value of your home backed by open door max. And it also gives you data about your home, like your heating efficiency, you know, your security, tap your phone to, to lock doors, open garage, all that, all that stuff. But if Open Door also can just send a push notification to everyone who doesn't have granite countertops in, <laughs> in Orlando zip code and be like, hey, we just did you know, this analysis and found that you can replace uh, or adding granite countertops increase the value of your home by $5,000. We can replace the granite countertops in your home for $3,000. Are you interested? That costs no money, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're already a customer. There's no additional customer acquisition cost. And so all so when Open Door offers to replace the granite countertop, they're gonna be cheaper than a regular contractor because they don't have to pay customer acquisition cost and they're gonna be more profitable. So it's this everything sort of fits in and works together. I think another 
Another example that I used recently is like, like let's say you're an Open Door Home customer and you also have homeowner's insurance through Open Door, right? Open Door can say, hey, you need a new roof. Your roof is 20 years old. And you know, if the customer says yes, Open Door replaces the roof. And then after that, Open Door offers you a new roof discount on your, on your homeowner's insurance because you have a new roof. You know what I mean? Like all of these products work better together, not just for Open Door, but for the customer. And there's no other company that can integrate all of those services and purpose built to do so. I first learned about Open Door through you talking about SoFi. I feel like there are some parallels and there's going to be different ways they can monetize their users here in the next five to 10 years. The same with Open Door because they're being vertically integrated and they're solving the whole hard problems that a lot of customers hate about brick and mortar banking. What do you think about SoFi? How'd you learn about it? SoFi just happens to be to fit a lot of my investment criteria and what I'm looking for. Like I want, I want infrastructure players. I want people who are displacing a lot of middlemen in a fragmented industry because the more, the more counterparties involved, the more CAC that can be stolen is profit. And that's, that's like a really important take home point. And so the companies that I've been really interested in historically all fit that model, right? Like open doors, displacing mortgage brokers, um, mortgage originators, title and escrow agents, uh, real estate agents, like, all, all of these all of these different parties that are involved in a transaction that all charge the customer CAC, which means the transaction is more expensive, has more friction, um, involves talking to more people, and, and is just a worse NPS experience for the customer. Same thing for SoFi, right? Like SoFi, SoFi is trying to be upstart Robin Hood and Marketa in one company. And that's that's really powerful because it gets to displace all of these all of these sort of pure play players and eat all of their CAC as as profits. And so that's that's one of the reasons I got I got really excited about SoFi. SoFi and Open Door both trying to build what could be called the the like super app model. It's really hard to do and you have to build a lot of infrastructure, but if it's achieved the economics of that model are better than any pure play competitor, regardless of, of what they say about their technology and product. Just the way that they're building the top of their funnels, both of the companies uh, make it super compelling. Uh, SoFi is going to be very, very sticky for a lot of people in the future because it, it's free to get an estimate on loans. And especially SoFi can uh, weigh the lifetime value of a potential customer and give them a really cheap loan that even hurts their business, but in the long term far exceeds because they're going to be able to get them back on the app and try different products and stay on the app. Same with Open Door and Open Door Max. Just being able to see the value of your home go up and down, that's something that nobody else offers. I just, it's hard to see how they're going to get killed. Yeah, I, I think I think that's that's a really good point. I also think, um, you know, going going back to Open Door, one of the biggest bare arguments for Open Door is just how small of a margin it, it's fighting for, right? Like it's it, it seems like such a fraction of um, other companies, and people will be like, why don't you just invest in a SaaS company that has eighty percent gross profit margin? Like why why invest in this company that that has such a low profit margin? And I actually think. This is misunderstood about Open Door as a company. I actually think it's an, it's an advantage, and, and we saw that with Zillow. But people interpreted it the wrong way. But the idea here is, you know, if you if you are a software company coming out the gates and you've got ninety percent gross profit margin, your margin is only ever going to go down because it's too rich a prize. Too like. 90% gross profit margin, you will have competitors coming at you from all angles and they will fight you on price because they can, right? They can lower their prices and so you have to lower your prices. And so you're in this constant game to try to maintain pricing power and maybe you'll end up with 70, 80% gross profit margins, which is great. But the point is, is that like, you're always going to have competition because everyone wants to eat, eat a piece of that pie. But in Open Door's case, they're fighting for 10% gross profit margin and it's a business that only succeeds with massive scale. And so there's no way that a competitor, a startup can come in right now and be like, hey, we're gonna compete with you on your 35 billion in purchasing power, and then also your 400,000 proprietary homes analyzed with your ABM. And we're gonna try to you know, make 9% or maybe even one day 10% of your gross, your gross profit margin. It's just insane. Like no one wants that, right? Like no one, no one wants to do that. It's too hard. 
And, and I think that that's super powerful because it means that the only company right now and potentially ever in the United States that's aiming to completely transform U.S. residential real estate is Open Door, and they own it outright, right? Like they're eighty percent share right now in the market. Offerpad isn't anywhere close, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not investing in the long term opportunity. They just want to have uh, a profitable business, and they're doing that. It's a nice small business, but they're not going for the opportunity. Redfin now is never going to scale ever mm -hmm. because it's. It's a, it's a poorly run business and they've also mischaracterized their ability to make it happen. And so all we have is open door. Redfin is starting to rescind signed and approved hiring offers from people. I, I don't know exactly what Redfin is rescinding. I also haven't confirmed this myself with any Redfin employees. So uh, this could be made up. It's really hard to know what's true and what's not on mm -hmm. Fintwit sometimes. But I, I would say like Redfin has no business being an iBuyer. They just don't. They don't have the culture for it. They don't have the scale. They don't have, they don't have the operational execution. It's just like it's not their core competency. And I, I would have had so much respect for Redfin if after Zillow's debacle, their CEO came out and they were like, I think this is probably not for us. We might partner with um, an iBuyer in the future. We might acquire an iBuyer in the future. But based on our economics being a tenth of as good as Zillow's was before Zillow failed, we should probably just gracefully bow out. Um, but they didn't. They doubled down on it. They, they actually said that they were going to triple down on it. And and that's despite, you know, having a 1% average gross profit margin on the Redfin Now business throughout 2021, which is crazy. Like that, that is an unprofitable business. Um, dramatically so, right? Open Door was never that bad at iBuying. What, what we're seeing for Redfin's core business in 2022 and beyond is that their core business is stalling, right? It's no longer a growth story. And so, of course, they're having to triple down on, on iBuying, even though it's a miserable business for them because it makes it look like the revenue is shooting up. Uh, but really, while the revenue is going up like this, their net loss is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen for Redfin. I hope they stop doing it, but it, it's an iconic company. It shouldn't be in the space. To the rate that Open Door is compounding, it's harder to tell exactly what they're going to be making in a few quarters because they're they're flipping homes and buying homes and selling homes within such a short window. Do you think Open Door is probably going to be the fastest growing company in your portfolio? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Open Door can do close to triple digit revenue growth um, off of eight billion in twenty twenty one for for probably two years. So I, yeah, I think I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a very fast growing company, sort of in, in perpetuity. To your core question of like the compounding effects of Open Door, this is another one of those pieces that's so misunderstood about the company is every home sale that Open Door does, every every home inspection that Open Door does, all of those data are feeding its proprietary automated valuation model. It's improving their operations, right? It's scaling their business. And and, and meanwhile, it's also allowing them to drive down structural costs uh, of their business. Every data point, every home sale, every home inspection, every data point is improving the efficacy of their model. And it's diminishing the variance of their model, which is super important for their portfolio approach. Because when they're looking at trying to price a market, if they can minimize variance, which is the difference between you know what they value the home at and what, what the home is actually worth, that means that their error rate approaches zero. And the closer their error rate is to zero, the more fail safe their business is. And Redfin and Offerpad are doing the same thing, but they're doing it at such a slower pace. And they're not investing the same resources in machine learning and technology and talent to make those technologies improve. And so when you think about compounding advantages, machine learning and artificial intelligence for a company that's doing you know 10 times the sales uh, as these other companies, it's dramatic. So the, the gap is just going to widen with time. This sort of creates that question of how long can these companies actually compete in, in a business that requires scale to be successful as Open Door is scaling so much rapidly off a much larger base? Well, why do you think people are so quick to discount Open Door based off the elevator pitch alone? Because I think it might be recency bias to the 2008 downturn, uh, the market crash, where just people just <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Like, why, why are people so quick to just discount Open Door right off? I think off the cuff, homes are emotional. Like anything that's emotional, like take politics, right? Politics are emotional. Religion is emotional. And so people have 
impressions baked in that they attach to their identity right off the bat. And that means that they're less likely to think about new ideas rationally, or, or at the very least, they're more likely to have a strong opinion immediately. And so when you look at sort of the, the immediate features of Open Doors business, it's a business that uh, requires a ton of debt. It's a super low gross profit business. It only happens, the transaction only happens once every 10 years. Um, you know, 2008 happened and homes, home prices fell like 20% in one day. Um, my parents lost all of their money on their home, that kind of thing. Like all of those features just, just create this constellation of concerns um, for a business who does what Open Door does. And, and I think if I hadn't looked deeper, if I hadn't kind of given it the benefit of the doubt and done my due diligence, I'd be in the same boat. I'd be like, this business is stupid. Why do I want this? I remember thinking about Uber that way after Uber went public. I was like, like I, I don't want a fraction of a low gross profit business done many, many times, right? Like I, I just didn't get it. I was like, this this seems like it's impossible to ever be a profitable company. And you know, to be fair, Uber is not free cash flow positive. So that's <laughs> maybe that, that intuition was right. But Open Door is profitable. Open Door is uh, free cash flow uh, positive right now, despite the fact that they weren't projecting to be uh, profitable at least until 2024, but most likely closer to 2025. And so, like I said, super misunderstood business, but when you look under the surface, there's so much to be excited about. And again, I wanna uh, thank you for coming on. And before we end, I, I do wanna go over the operator. Are you gonna be writing anything pretty soon for Open Door? I probably won't be writing a deep dive on, on Open Door anytime soon, just because a few months ago I wrote what I, what I hope to be sort of my definitive work on uh, Open Door in The Art of Winning an Unfair Game. I'm actually oh, moving yeah. a little bit more towards like writing about private stage companies um, and speaking with you know founders and CEOs and and management teams about their the business. Like I just wrote an article about Divi, which is sort of in the rent to own space adjacent to Open Door. But that said, I will be continuing to write Open Door specific content on Data Door, so that'll be released on a pretty pretty regular basis. It just won't have the same like deep dive flavor. It'll more be like, hey, let's talk about this topic. Like let's do an article on open door exclusives and, and what that means for the company or like, let's talk about how well they're scaling their mortgage business, that kind of thing. Cool. Hey, I'm glad you joined. It was really fun to talk to you. Please follow Tyler uh, on Twitter. Trust me, you're, you won't regret it. But in any case, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, man. Yeah, this was a great talk. I really appreciate it.